AMD's Fidelity FX Super Resolution FSR, was announced last night. FSR is AMD's answer to DLSS. It does anti-aliasing, upscaling, and improves frame rates. And there are different modes depending on which balance of those things that you want. They've even named the modes similarly to Nvidia's DLSS, only with everything named one tier along. Instead of Ultra Performance, they have Performance, and on the other end, instead of Nvidia's Quality setting, AMD has Ultra Quality, which is going to really confuse things when it's compared to DLSS. In the demonstration, FSR's performance mode was seen to triple frame rates, but officially they only claim more than 2x performance at its fastest setting, and then 25 times performance on their website. Unfortunately, FSR, much like DLSS, requires developers to implement it into their games, so it isn't just something that can simply be enabled in any title that you wish. Which is a shame. I know a lot of people, including myself, were quietly hoping that AMD would have discovered a clever way to get it working in lots of new and old titles automatically, since this would have been easier for AMD to maintain in the long run, and because automatic support would have excused any shortcomings with the technology itself. But since it needs to be supported on a per-game basis, it has put itself in direct competition with DLSS, and will likely require more of AMD's, and developers, time to keep on top of it, and to ensure supported games are released for it from this moment onwards. So how many games will support FSR? So far they claim that over 10 game studios and engines in 2021 will implement it. That's this year, and not come FSR's release day. If these 10 things are just single games, then it doesn't sound like much. But if just a few key engines like Unreal or Unity are among those that are supported, then that's very hopeful indeed, as this should enable easy support in many future titles. Right now, DLSS is already supported in about 50 games, so AMD has some catching up to do. I've compared FSR with DLSS a lot in this video because they are very similar, and because it's a logical comparison to make, but there are some important ways in which it's different. For a start, any modern card can use this. DLSS is limited to just RTX cards, but FSR supports most modern cards, going back as far as AMD's old Vega and Polaris generations, and on the Nvidia side of things, as far back as the 1000 series. So any users struggling by on a GeForce 1060 or Radeon 570 can rejoice. This could help to double your frame rates. He even mentioned support for APUs like my Ryzen 2200G, which is extremely exciting indeed. Right now, these systems are limping along in modern titles, but FSR could enable smooth performance at acceptable image qualities on these systems, and since these are the ones most in need of a performance boost, I see Ryzen APUs as being the perfect match for a technology like FSR. And this is kind of how it's being marketed. DLSS is mostly marketed by Nvidia to enable ray tracing at higher resolutions, but FSR is marketed by AMD, less about the ray tracing element, and more about its potential just to supercharge performance. And I don't think it's any coincidence that this announcement coincides with their unveiling of the new RX 6000 series of mobile graphics cards. Laptops typically have smaller screens with higher pixel densities, so FSR is great on devices such as these, as any small drop in image quality will be masked, while the performance gains will be greatly appreciated. So that's all well and good. But how good is FSR? AMD has teased a few comparison videos which I shall attempt to analyse. Disclaimer, we won't know for sure until it's released, since these comparisons were done on YouTube, with a low bitrate. And they were handpicked by AMD themselves. However, I have still spotted a thing or two from them that I'd like to share with you. The first one I'll cover is the GeForce 1060 comparison. Why they chose to showcase it running on an Nvidia card is anyone's guess. It could be to throw shade at DLSS for not supporting this card, or it could be to hide AMD's performance with the technology until release day, or it could be to let Nvidia's card absorb any criticism about the technology. But I will say that I found the result to be blurry. Very blurry. Sure, it seems good at removing aliasing, but it also strips the textures of their clarity, and the edges of their definition. This is quality mode for FSR, so it isn't the best ultra quality setting, but with two modes still below it, I'd expect this one to still produce a decent image. But alas, it came with drawbacks. In fact, for a 41% frame rate improvement, I don't think it's worth it. I'd rather just run the game at 1080p instead, or to drop a few graphic settings. Perhaps FSR could be used in conjunction with AMD's sharpening tools to reclaim some definition. I certainly noticed that Cyberpunk is made too soft with DLSS for my liking, but with sharpening over the top of it, it can look significantly crisper, in exchange for a bit more image noise. This demonstration of FSR looks kind of like how DLSS 1 looked, especially on the leaves of the trees. 
DLSS 1 was rightly ridiculed in titles such as Battlefield 5, where it blurred stuff so badly that it was better just to drop the resolution and to use sharpening on the image instead. And this is concerning to me because we know that FSR doesn't use motion vectors, which I believe DLSS 2 greatly relies upon to clear the image up and to carry as much information forward to the next frame as possible. Without these things, FSR sounds like it's more similar to how DLSS 1 worked. Don't get me wrong, you can still get great results without using motion vectors. Consoles using checkerboard rendering have proven this. But this particular example of FSR didn't really impress me too much. Admittedly, both sides of the comparison have a lot of motion blur, which masks the details that I care most about, but I could still make out some interesting points. The native 1440p side of the image uses temporal anti-aliasing, and you can make out long streaks behind certain details. I spotted a few instances of this on the FSR side as well, but it was less pronounced probably because the whole thing was already blurred into oblivion. I also noticed some jitter around some of the objects on the native side of things. This can be used to fade between different model LODs, but it could also be a sign that checkerboard rendering is being used. I can't imagine that AMD would compare their upscaling solution to a game that's already using upscaling, but it was a curious detail that I spotted in this comparison. So I can't say I was impressed with the 1440p example that they showed, but they also provided a 4K demonstration on a powerful 6800 XT. 4K is a better fit for FSR because each pixel is worth less, giving FSR trickery more leeway to work with. And not only is this at a higher resolution, but it's now using FSR's best ultra quality setting. And the result certainly looks crisper and clearer than the 1440p demonstration did. If I pause and zoom in on the textures, it reveals quite a big drop in clarity over native. The details on those stalky things have been blurred, but maybe this could pass as cinematic anti-aliasing. Unfortunately, any analysis beyond that is swallowed up by YouTube's bitrate. And finally, a comparison between all four different FSR modes. Ultra quality runs 50% faster than native, quality runs 100% faster, and performance runs 200% faster. Unfortunately, I have very little to say about this comparison because we're really being hamstrung by YouTube's bitrate here, and the sections are so thin and different looking that it isn't fair to compare them anyway, with the scene to the right getting darker and with less foreground detail anyway. But if performance FSR is anything like Nvidia's ultra performance DLSS mode, then it's to be reserved for resolutions greater than 4K anyway. So that's it. A great step in the right direction for AMD, who have gone from having nothing to having an all-round answer to Nvidia's DLSS. Given the state of the market right now, and with FSR's support for older generations of cards, for PC gamers, this could be the most exciting announcement of the year.